Uh, so certainly my kids have said that, you know, they like this one more than this one. <laughs> right? So next year, what that tells me is uh, rather than just, you know, insisting that my kids like this one, I should just grow more of these, because I like these more too. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd talk a little bit today about storing uh, squash and also just some general comments about growing squash for food and keeping squash and that sort of thing and, and the, the thought process that uh, I go through every year when I decide what varieties I'm going to grow and that sort of thing. So here I've got my uh, squash I grew. All the squash I grew this year that have not yet been eaten is basically like a wheelbarrow full of squash. And I got, I got three different varieties. I've got um, this, uh, here's a smaller one, but uh, Georgia Candy Roaster. And uh, I've got this, uh, ooh, it's called a uh, Warded Hubbard. And uh, I've got this one here, this, uh, I don't even know what this is called. But there's some variety from the Ukraine. Um, I'll put the name up on the screen there. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, so those are the three uh, varieties that I grow. And I just uh, I store them here in my, my garage. Uh, if I check the thermometer, it's around 10 degrees Celsius, maybe 11 in here right now. And uh, this time of year, that's about the temperature it is. It's it's an, it's it's not it's heated it's heated in the sense that there is a electric uh, baseboard heater in here but the thermostat is set to zero zero C it's probably not exactly C, zero I'd say it's probably like one or two actually um, because it never gets down to zero in here so it's connected to the house this this garage is underneath so above us here is my living room and uh, dining room and uh, of course it's also on the side of the house so it's sort of connected to the house and I'm sure it gets some level of heat uh, and insulation uh, just by virtue of that but it also does have a heater so I mean it's got a garage door right over there which isn't tight by any means so it can get cold here in the winter so I've been out here on days in the winter when I can tell that the just by the smell and that sort of thing that the baseboard heater has kicked in so the baseboard heater basically keeps it from going below freezing here and generally speaking all winter long no matter how cold it is outside it's usually no colder than four degrees celsius in here during the winter it stays around four five six degrees celsius all the time so it's kind of a perfect cold room and it, it just happens to get cool enough right around the time when it's getting frosty all the time and i gotta bring my winter squash in okay so all i do with the uh, squash just put them on this shelf. I usually like to have them on top of a piece of wood or a piece of cardboard or paper or something like that. I just think there's a, a little bit of air. Um, these are sitting right on the metal here, but I'm going to use these little ones first. And sort of, they're in a bad spot here. There's so many things in the way, ladder and stuff like that. I, mean, I just sort of jam them in here. There's really not space in here for this stuff. I'm constantly moving my kids' stuff, my wife's stuff, and I mean, this is a, it's a garage. It's supposed to be a garage you can put a car in, but. Uh, not going to really fit. Could barely get a car. You could get a small car in here, but you couldn't do much with it. Uh, it's a bit, you know. So it's it's sort of a storage room <laughs> to some extent. Um, so you move a few things around and use these things up as the winter goes along. Um, now, how did I arrive at these three different varieties of of squash? You might ask. Uh, I started growing this one because I was looking for a pumpkin that I could make jack-o'-lanterns out of and put on the front porch and that sort of thing around Halloween this time of year um, but that also would taste good you know normally when you buy just you know the sort of large jack-o'-lantern pumpkins uh, that, that I'm sure there's people that like it and have been eating it forever but I don't I've never found a form of jack-o'-lantern pumpkin that has a tasty flesh certainly nothing in line with a good sweet squash um, the great thing about these ones if, if they're laying on the ground sideways, they grow long and um, cylindrical, right? Like this, I don't know if I can get this down without getting all my back out. Ugh. There's a good one. That's the biggest one I grew this year. I'll save the seeds from this guy. All right, when they're on their side, they grow long and cylindrical. And uh, if you reposition them so they're 
just straight up and down. At least I found this seems to be the case. I haven't done enough experiments to confirm this absolutely. I'll have to try doing this with all of them one year. Um, but it seems to be that when they're growing straight up and down, they take a bit more of a jack-o'-lantern shape like this one. So you can turn this into a really cool looking jack-o'-lantern, but also it tastes good. These taste pretty good. Um, so they're good for both of those things. You can give a cup away to a friend. You know, we had a, a, a charity event at work and I gave, a, uh, gave one up so they could sell it and give the money to charity, that sort of thing. But they're not, like I've had other squash that taste better, let's put it that way, right? These taste good and we like them. Um, and they're very reliable. But uh, this year I decided to branch out a bit and try some new varieties. So I tried this uh, Georgia Candy Roaster. Now this one's about the right size for uh, a side dish with a family of four. Um, you grow a larger one, like this isn't even my biggest one. This, this is like at least at least two meals, <laughs> right? This is a lot, right? Anyway, these Georgia Candy Roaster, they taste really good. Um, you know, maybe like a butternut, but um, and, and of course not exactly the same, but you know, a, a sweet, uh, orange flesh, very good eating. Uh, they grew really well. Uh, they were very prolific. Uh, I'll have to see how well they store. The great thing about these, uh, ver you know, these uh, get pumpkins all over the place here. Great thing about these is that they store really well. These don't start getting soft around the ends till March, sometime in March. And sometime in March, I got to do something with all of them. Because they all start getting soft around the end. Each one's different, really depends on how, how gentle I've been with it and that sort of thing. So, uh, when I chose these, um, it said that they store well. We'll see, right? And, uh, you know, some of them got uh, compromised because uh, of the way I had them on the ground. Just had them sitting on grass. So, uh, the skin got a little bit of compromise. So, uh, who knows how that'll affect things. Yeah. But anyway, these taste much better. <laughs> They're really good. Um, now these uh, Warded Hubbard, these are supposed to store really well and they're supposed to taste really good. I, I haven't tried one yet this year and it's, it's uh, actually today as I film this it's Canadian Thanksgiving. Uh, I think it's uh, October uh, 13th today. So uh, I actually have one of these, uh, I'd like to, I wanted to try one of these today, but I just, I, I've got to use up, one, I've got one of these that I cut in half last weekend, so i got to use the other half. So, jury's still out, uh, flavor-wise, but everything I've read says these are supposed to taste really good. So, the issue when you're making these kinds of decisions is which plant is the most reliable in terms of when I grow it, will I get a yield? which plant stores really well insofar as I can grow more than I could possibly eat in the fall and how long will it keep in storage into the next year. Because if I grow a whole bunch of something and it only keeps for a month and <laughs> I can't keep up with it so you know the yields important but the storage capability is important too because you can grow excess during the growing months and have them uh, just sitting around ready to eat uh, in the winter months so that's important. And, uh, and the third thing <laughs> is flavor because <laughs> if it doesn't taste good no one in your house is going to eat it unless you like you know uh have uh some sort of incentive uh <laughs> you know eat your squash young man you know or you load it full of butter and sugar and stuff like that and do that um so those three things are all part of the decision making process you know i'm really happy with these uh candy roaster we'll see what happens with these uh awarded hubbards but this is my first season with them, where I've been growing these for a number of years. So, I mean, let's say I, I like eating the uh, candy roaster and the Hubbard. Uh, I'll be inclined to say f I'm going to forget growing these. Okay, let's say I'll, I find these taste better. And like, let's say I find they store equally as well as these. That would be ideal, right? I'm still going to grow these next year because I've been growing these for multiple years and they're reliable. Like they always produce, they always give me a yield. Um, you know, they always seem to do really well uh, on my property. I always get something out of them. So I'm going to keep growing these until I'm, I'm absolutely certain that these 
uh, these ones snow well are reliable reliable reliably give me a yield right um, but even then I still gotta grow some of these because I need something to make uh, a jack-o'-lantern out of because uh, that just seems to be the 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 culture in the tradition here in North America every year you you put a lot of time and energy into growing a perfectly good piece of food and then you uh, use it as a direct decoration and throw it away <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense does it um, but anyway that's what we do um, and uh, you know uh, neighbors and people like that are always very appreciative if you give them you know, hey would you like a pumpkin sort of thing right so I got the space uh, anyway just some thoughts about that about you know if you've got the space I, I can't think of a more I mean potatoes are a very useful crop because they store well and you can grow a lot and they keep really well and they're easy to grow um, if you've got good soil um, squash is another one for this climate this part of the world where with very little work you can get a pretty good return in terms of you know calories you know food uh, in a form that stores well it's got its own packaging sort of thing right um, so it's another thing that I tend to grow a fair amount of right this is a lot of meals like so one of these is two meals worth of food so you know we, we, we cook a squash every week once a week we cook a squash now until they're all gone uh, and then we'll, we'll use them in like one of the week, you know, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we tend to have a big, uh, fairly elaborate meal, right? And squash from this time until they're gone. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I'm sure the odd week we take a week off, but basically we try to incorporate squash, squash a large squash dish at least once a week into the meal. Um, so it's a major part of our life and we get a lot out of it. Um, so it's, it's worth growing and I, uh, you know, I just can't. Uh, of, the, of the calorie crops that I grow, um, it's, it's one of the ones I really enjoy. And since you, you know, since you tend to grow a lot of it, uh, if you don't like what you've gotten out of that yield, you're stuck with a lot of food you got to eat that you don't like. Uh, so certainly my kids have said that, you know, they like this one more than this one, <laughs> right? So next year, what that tells me is uh, rather than just you know, insisting that my kids like this one, I should just grow more of these because I like these more too, right? <laughs> and then everybody's happy and these seem to grow fairly well. So in sum, when you're deciding, deciding what variety of squash should I grow on my piece of land, right? There's three things you have to consider. Flavor. If you don't like the way it tastes, why are you growing it? <laughs> Flavor. <laughs> That's very important. Um, how well it stores because if you if you can't, you know, stick it in your cold room and, and, or some, some reasonably uh, uh, suitable storage space, and uh, like a garage, <laughs> right? And just have them all there and just, they're just sitting on a shelf here and I just use them when I want them. That's a great quality for a, um, you know, a storage crop to have. Uh, and then uh, reliability. How well does that thing give up a yield where you are, right? Not just in terms of its disease resistance and that sort of stuff, and, and, and not just in terms of its, uh, how much it, it seems to do well with your soil conditions and your growing conditions, but also the length of season and that sort of thing. Some varieties take 120 days to maturity, some are 100 days to maturity. You know, some things are fast growing, some things are slow growing. If you live, live somewhere with a short growing season, you'd, you wouldn't want to plant a squash that they would grow, you know, in the deep south somewhere. You want to have something that can, you know, finish within the, the limitation of your growing season. So, those are all the things you have to think about. Hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Click the bell if you want to get notified when I make a new video. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.